Hi, this is Needlepointers.com and today we'd like to show you how to recycle old Altoid boxes and calendars into something new. For this project you will need some Altoids boxes that are empty and cleaned, old calendars, tissue paper is optional, scissor and a pen or pencil, freezer paper, a plate and an applicator brush for the Mod Podge, some Mod Podge and some white or other colored paint, spray paint. So before we decoupage onto the Altoids boxes, I've cleaned them and I'm going to spray paint them with this Rust-Oleum paint. It's just spray paint I found at the store. Any kind of spray paint is going to work. I'm using white. You could use another color. And I have them, um, since I'm outside in my yard, I have them sitting in this cardboard box. And I'm going to spray paint the top and the bottom of the boxes, not the inside. And I'm trying to get the, I'm going to get the sides. So now I'll leave these dry and then check them afterwards to make sure that they're covered well with the white paint and touch them up if I need to. I have a whole bunch of calendars here that I've collected over the years. I don't tend to throw out my calendars because I always figure there could be some kind of craft project I could use them for. Also, a lot of charities send you free calendars every year and if you have some of those, you can use the pictures from those also. For this project, the main pictures in the calendar are too big for the Altoids boxes, but there are some perfect size pictures usually on the back of your calendar with the little snippets of what's going to be in the calendar for the year. Also, some calendars will have little smaller pictures mixed in on the, on the months, and you may want to use some of those. For this quilt calendar, there is a small picture at the top along the sides of the months and it's the same one on each month but you could use this also for the top of the Altoids boxes. The first thing I'm going to do is make a little template that can be used to then cut out your pictures. To make the template I'm going to take a piece of the calendar that I don't want to use on the front of the, thing, of the box and Trace around the outside of the Altoids box. Cut the shape out. And you kind of want to cut it on just a little bit on the inside of the line that you marked. Because you want your pictures to be slightly smaller than the size of the Altoid box. Once you cut it out, check to make sure that it's slightly smaller looks like I didn't trace very well and I have a bunch of extra on that one side so I'm going to trim that down and so now I have my template. The next step is to take your template and center it over the picture you want to use for your Altoid box and then trace around your template Then cut out just inside the trace line because you don't want the little the line to show. So this is ready to be applicated on top of the Altoids box. For these, the photos are smaller than the size of my template. I will just cut these out on the lines. I've also had it where the photos are close together and I could fit two on the front of the Altoids box. And so I just cut around the two pictures. So this smaller picture could still be applicated to the front of the box. But if you don't want to see the actual box, that's what the tissue paper is for. So to use the tissue paper, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just mark a line one or two layers of tissue paper. So now we have the tissue paper that we can place on top and then the picture.
picture can go on. So I'm using the freezer paper to protect my work surface while I'm working with the Mod Podge. I put a little bit of Mod Podge onto my plate and I have my foam brush to Mod Podge the picture onto the Altoids box. Just take a little bit of Mod Podge onto your brush and brush it across the top of the box. Then take your photo and center it on the box. Now be careful because the Mod Podge is sticky and it can get on your fingers and then you could end up pulling up a piece of the picture. So be careful when you're doing that. Once you have it on there, then simply put some Mod Podge over top of the picture and onto the edges, across the edges. Make sure the Mod Podge doesn't drip down along the sides because you don't want to end up sealing the box closed. So that's one layer of Mod Podge. I want to put two, at least two layers of Mod Podge on this. So I'll wait for this to dry before I put a second layer. For these ones that have the tissue paper, it's just a little bit of an extra step, but you put the Mod Podge down across the box, as we did before, and then center your one or two layers of the tissue paper down, and again Mod Podge over that. And the Mod Podge dries clear, so you don't have to worry about it. And I do have some wrinkles in my tissue paper, but that just adds a little bit more character to it. The next step is to take your photo and center it on top. And the Mod Podge that you put down already is the glue that will hold it down. So just as before, we want to Mod Podge over the photo. And I try to make nice even strokes and try to get rid of any bubbles. Now I see this one has been drying for a few minutes and I'm not sure if you can see but it's kind of lifting up a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is carefully, you know, try to smooth that out a little bit. And I'm putting some Mod Podge onto my finger so that it doesn't stick to the picture and lift up pieces of the or rip pieces of the picture. The first layer of Mod Podge is now dry on the boxes and at this point I want to check to make sure it's not lifting up and as you can see possibly on this one it's lifting up a bit and this one needs another layer of Mod Podge to try to get the edges of this calendar down. I'll put another layer of Mod Podge across all of these boxes and let them dry and then they'll be finished. So for this one where it's coming up on the edges, I want to try to make sure I try to get some Mod Podge underneath to where it's sticking up and then run my finger to try to push it down and get it to stick. And once in a while you need to do a couple layers and you might have to do an extra layer of Mod Podge on one that's acting like this. Here are the finished boxes. You can see they're nicely appliqued on there with the Mod Podge. And we're going to be filling these boxes and giving them in a citizenship basket at our fair this year. The basket is for Senior Citizen Day. So we've made these little boxes and then I have little sayings inside. This one says, wishing you a day filled with sunshine. Happy Senior Citizens Day. And it's going to come from our 4-H club. I have some other sayings that I found. May your day be filled with all kinds of bright and sunny things. Happy Senior Citizens Day. And also, sending lots of hugs your way. Happy Senior Citizens Day. And another one is, today we're celebrating you. So we'll have a saying on the inside of each box for the person to see. And then we found some things to fill the boxes with. Things like these little Jolly Rancher candies. We also have these little post-it notes and we'll add a small pen 
or two in there. Another is a little stamp pad and some little stamps along with some artist paper that we cut to the size to fit in the box. Like that. And another one we found is putting some artist paper and some of these oil pastels, which are similar to crayons, except that they're oil pastels. And these will fit. We can put a couple different colors in here and with a few little, just a cute little activities in there. I hope you enjoyed seeing this way to recycle old Altoid boxes and some old calendars. If you like this video, please click the like button below and leave us a comment and tell us what you think and tell us what, what would you put inside the Altoid boxes. We got these ideas by just going to the dollar store and trying to find small things that would fit in the box. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our videos on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. And visit our website, needlepointers.com, for lots of other recycling tutorials like this one. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our free weekly newsletter. Happy crafting!